very good afternoon to you all and this is Elumba TV and you've got Lydia Oduada and today we've got a wonderful guest with us here. She's an author and also a child psychologist and she'll be talking to us today on how the lockdown has affected families positively. Now, uh, every, almost everyone is saying this lockdown is just all oh, this. Like most people have a lot of negative things to say about the lockdown. A few are saying, for me, this lockdown is a very good thing. But let's take it down to the families. What are families saying? Then some families will say, ah, I just needed these children to be in school. Oh, they ought to be somewhere. Um, I, I wish I could send them off somewhere for holiday. You know, a lot of all those things about families and we've heard this over and over again. So today, we decided to bring to you for Lashade A or Shiba. And she'll be telling us how positively the lockdown has affected families. So people, let's officially meet for Lashade. Good afternoon to you, madam. Good afternoon. Thank you so much. I, I'm happy to be here today. Thank you. Welcome to you. And we are glad that you showed up. Uh, uh, why would I show I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super honored to be here. I'm wow. Really it's it's a good you. one. So okay, so let's let's meet uh, Mrs. Falashade on her own profile. How will uh, Falashade introduce herself? Thank you very much. I'm happy. Right. To... Okay, so uh, I missed that part where you were introducing yourself. I think that network wasn't my friend at that point. So it was hanging here too as well. My oh. name is Falashade Abiodun Shibo. I'm a caterer. I'm a, I'm an What's it called? Um, <laughs> I have an NGO where I help um, physically challenged people and at the IDPs and less people generally. And I'm also the author of I Am Fearfully and Wonderfully Made a Girl, Ch a Girl Child Book first before I now had the second Girl Child. And I'm also the publisher of the first Nigerian food magazine called Cousin Crafters. Mm. So at the moment, I'm a child author and I'm obsessed with helping children reprogram their mindsets. Mm. So I'm focused on creative writing right now but mostly for children. My writing is about self-help, mindsets, mental health, mainly for children. My focus is on children. Okay. For us to raise mentally strong children so that we don't have to fix broken adults in the future. Oh, you, you know, I, I'm very sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay, it's fine. You, you're giving me a lot. Like, we do not know this part of you. I forgot like, to I was like, to children. <laughs> no, that's you. That's a fine to you. Okay, like... <laughs> Just from your introduction, I got to know that uh, you're interested in reprogramming children. And I yes, also know that it. it's better to uh, build a strong and healthy child mentally than yes. to fix a broken adult. Adults, yes. yes yeah. So when, when you say uh, reprogramming children, can you let us know what you mean? Yes, for example, um, the boy child watches a lot of movies mm -hmm. that they encourage children, for example whether it's black American movie, whether it's white movie, Nigerian movie, every single the boy child watches, you will have seven girlfriends, you will now end up marrying the right one. The boy child already program as if it's okay for him to cheat. I've seen seven years old boy telling me that I'm definitely going to marry two wives, auntie, I'm going to cheat on my wife. The, yes, oh. the, 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 yes, the, 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 the generalization of people, he sees his father doing it, he sees his uncles doing it, most kids, their uncle will tell them, tell her auntie outside I'm not around because it's with another girlfriend inside the house. So the boy child naturally assumes it's okay for him to cheat. Be a more woman person. I mean, I'm focusing now on boy child, not just girl child anymore. My focus at first was girl child because of, you know, you go to churches, you hear, okay, don't let me use churches, religious homes because I don't want to be offensive to Christians out there. You go to religious homes, you hear, they told us it was a girl. God did it as a boy. Is it Satan that did the girl? You know, it, it's wrong. You know, all those little things a girl child is hearing is, and she's wondering, oh, am I not a human being? Because when they said, they told us it was a girl. Imagine a four year old girl sitting down listening to that. They told us it was a girl, but God did it as a boy. Let's celebrate every child. They're all human. They're all special. So the programmed view that we've had that the girl, the boy child is more important than the girl child. In some cultures, in, um, in, like I said, religious homes, even in the society, you know, that is why they also, at the end of the day, the girl child assumes she must manage a bad marriage. That's why they fall into this domestic violence problem. They are ashamed to leave because people make fun of them. So there's so much burden on girls. They get married, they go to, they go to pray, they'll tell them, 
go to um, barrenness with the council. They don't pray for low sperm counts. They pray for barrenness. And you will have seen so many marriages in the future where the guy is actually the problem, not even the girl. But the girl is more praying and fasting. <laughs> Do you understand? For She can pray and fast for three months, white fasting and eating only fruits. But it's the guy that has the problem. Mm. So the programming, we have to reprogram that everybody should be responsible. And they should put less burden on the girl child. That's what I'm writing about. That's one of my focuses for all children. So it's not just girls anymore, but both boys and girls. We should, we should reprogram their mindsets. Very important. I like the part where you say reprogram because uh, society has so given us one direction, one track, we're going one yeah. way. So it's Definitely. time for us to change our mindset and it starts from yeah. here when you yeah. send the message. You already Definitely. So you are a child psychologist. At what yes, point did you venture into child psychology? Has it always been what you do, what you've no, been doing? Never. I never I never saw myself as a child psychologist in my life, honestly. You if I tell you the story, you laugh at the end of the day. What actually made me? I had a very good friend who I thought I was her best friend. And I started writing a letter to myself to reprogram to see the reason why I do that. Number one. We have to always sit down to love ourselves first. Well, because I was looking for friendship, I was looking for love outside myself. You know, we, 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 we've always been taught be kind, be kind to people, be kind to people. We've not been taught to be kind to ourselves. So the truth is, I've always been somebody who always gives love more than the, more than the love I've given myself. I've given to people. I've always been somebody who will always work on my own for people. I'm somebody who, if you ask me for hundred naira, if I have seventy, if I'm scared of you. I ask him to error, you are borrowing 100 error from me, I'll go and borrow 30 to give you because I don't want to offend you. And somebody always thinks, I don't want to offend somebody, I don't want to. But truth is, after giving that person 100 error, they might still complain that you didn't give them 150, they didn't give me extra. So I found out that I have to love myself, I have to be strong, I have to say no. You know, for so, such a long time, I've seen people manipulate me, you know. So I started writing the letter and I was talking to myself and I also saw the same problem about talking to my child. She was already inheriting it from me, you know. That um, I won't call it kindness, I'll call it a bit of foolishness because <laughs> yes, that's, that's what I was. So I started um, writing letters to myself. Somebody saw it and said, This is the book, Shadi. You know, I wrote Say No to Bully. I wrote um, I Despite People That Really Care About You. I know I wrote um, I wrote Teenage Crushes and I just started writing. A friend saw it and just said, That it's the book. Why don't you turn it to a book? And that was how it was. The book was born, but it was for girl child. And being a mother of two girls, you are in Nigeria and I'm in Nigeria. You know the way it is. Anywhere you go, people always ask, you know, she doesn't have a son. So I wanted people to know, I'm sorry to use phrases this way, but the only time you feel bad when you don't have a son is when you see yourself as a failure in life. I'm not a failure. I'm not saying where I want to be, but I believe my two kids already are going to success stories. So it's only when you believe you have to inherit. Because in the in the eighth, in the nineteenth, I think in the 40s or 30s or 50s or 60s, they always wanted a son because of inheritance. Yeah. So that when the father built the house, something was inherited because the girls are not allowed to inherit things. So I just wanted to reprogram that that if I have two daughters now, I don't need them to inherit my husband's wealth or whatever he has. I need them to work hard to make their own money. I need them to be pilot, to be engineer, to be doctor, to be restaurant here, to be whatever they want to be. So I found out for every child, whether girl or boy, just build them to believe in themselves and be wealthy on their own. Not so that that's yeah, that's where the book came from. That's where the child psychologist thing came from. Basically, I didn't plan it. Oh, okay. <laughs> now uh, while while you were talking, you did mention that you'd want your children to be what whoever they want to be, whoever they want to be. If you want to be a doctor, go ahead and be a doctor. You want to be a catra, go ahead and be a catra. Now you yes. know that oftentimes, like most adults, they are in professions or they chose careers that are not them. Their parents influenced a lot of days. Do you yes. think it's still ideal or we should abolish that uh, parents' decision making career wise? I don't think so. You know why? The truth about life is if my child says she wants to be a singer now, for example, I would still tell her you, have a, you need a day job. There are some passions that won't make money fast. You need to be reasonable. And I feel sometimes we have to pay bills. If I have to, Let's say if I have to relocate to whichever country right now, at the end of the day, maybe as a, I am a kitchen at the moment, mm -hmm. and I relocate to Canada, I live around white people. Ooh, it's a malade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So at the end of the day, my passion is kitchen, but that's my environment does not need my food. So I have to, I have to get a real job. 
So I always say, it depends on the environment. I have no problem a parent trying to direct their kids to a particular career. I have no problem. I want my daughter to be a pilot. And I hope she'll be interested. Yeah, I, I really want my second daughter to be a pilot. She's interested in flying. She talks about it. And I have like five female pilot friends. So I plan to take her to them. They should talk to her and encourage her to be a pilot. At the age of 16, she might go into flying school. She doesn't even know to go to the basic university that everybody goes to. She can go to university mm -hmm. later. You know, life has changed. Yeah. So I am, I am of the period that parents can encourage, but not force, not turn into a fight. You can tell, you don't want to be a doctor. I think it's a good profession for you. The child can be a doctor for a while. If they want later in future, they can decide to change their career. That's how I say it. So there's, I won't say no, and I won't say yes completely. So it's in between. Huh. So you stand up between and say, well, this is it. But if you want that, and they're yeah. married, okay, that's a good yeah. one. Like not yeah. really imposing it on the child. Like most no, it's not imposing it. That's a good Just give your own impression, your own idea. Just suggest to the child and let the child not decide. Okay. All right, now let's come down to the discuss of today, family okay. and the lockdown. How has it been for you being a mother of two beautiful girls and this lockdown? Did you freak out? Did you snap at any point? Like, No, I was excited. I was happy. It gave me time to have my husband around. Somebody who leaves home every day, 6 a.m., at the 6 30 a.m., he's gone to work. He comes back. 6 p.m. And you know the way it is in Nigeria. Most men don't like being at home on Friday. They want to hang out with their friends. Right. So usually I only have Saturday and Sunday to spend with him. So for me, he gave us more time to bond as a family. He gave my children more time to even learn how to cook. That's how they started a YouTube page. Wow. It's called, it's Momo and Kiki. Yes. From this lockdown, they have their YouTube page now teaching their friends. And I'm so impressed. I'm so happy right now that over 20 parents have gotten across to me that I've encouraged them to allow their children cook. I've encouraged them to allow their children to use knife because they have experience is scared of my my sister child using knife. Let her use knife. She will cut her and she'll cry and keep quiet. You can't protect them forever. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. You know, I love them to try things. I love them to do things. So the idea is it's it gave family it, it gave a good family time. We know we exercise together, we, we have hills around my side anyway. So we walk to the hill, we talk, we just we sit down as a family. Something we've not been able to do. Maybe we do just once a month or once in two months. So for me, I am. I was happy about the lockdown. It gave me time with my family and my children. Wow! So for you, you while, while you were celebrating the lockdown, some were hoping that uh, school resumes so children will go back to school so that they would have time for yes. the job. Maybe uh, you aren't going out every morning, so you don't have it uh, selling on you. Like the children shouldn't be around. I because I, I'm not going to be at home. I'll be at work. I don't know what they are doing and all of that. Yes. So for you, it's uh, plus. <laughs> Now, let's look at schools being on lockdown for like six months now. We've been away for yeah. six months. And yeah. most schools came up with an online idea where they have to yeah. uh, stream their classes, teach their children, yeah. their Zoom and other applications there is. Well, how has it been for you? Yeah, Meeting the network has been the problem. They, just, I loved it. I enjoyed it. I always set, I set it up for them. And I use that time to read too. So most times when I tell them when they are in class for me, they'll just tell me tomorrow you are reading um, Think and Grow Rich today. The richest man in Babylon today. So as I, as they are in class, I'm also in my own class. Oh <laughs> everybody I've used the lockdown. Yes, I've used the lockdown to actually read like six or seven books that I wasn't planning to read before. Wow. So from that I've been trying to read for two or three years. I, I had oh. to read it. There was no place to go. After exercising, you come home, you have your bath, you read. You know, so I, I, it's been okay for me. I like the online classes. No? So for you, you would want the online class to continue? No, I want them to resume. There's nothing like physical contact, talking to people in real. Mm. There's nothing like it. it it's, um, the human contact is very important. The human interaction is very important. We can't forever be online all through. No, mm -hmm. I really want them to go back to school. It's important for them to run around in the field. It's important for them to ride bicycle play, jump, fight, squirrel, talk to each other. It's important. I like it's that part. Fight, squirrel, because you can't, you can't get rid yes. of it entirely. <laughs> yeah, hug I, each other. There's no way that one of hug each other. You know? I think that's the major part where parents would want the children to be in school, where, where they have to set so, You know, mothers especially are lawyers by default because you have to settle quarrels, you have to resolve issues between siblings. Oh, Kiki wants this. Yes. No, Momo says no. 
and you just have to be a <laughs> point. I, I know. I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So now um, we have these parents that are like, "How did you do it? How did you manage it? Do you want to share your secrets or give them some advice that will have helped or will help still to bond with the, uh, children this period because some are still at home?" Uh, well, um, for parents, you know, it's not easy for parents who have always been working class. Mm -hmm. For somebody who is used to waking up 6.30 a.m., like the average Lagos person, you know, the way it is in Lagos. I remember when I was working in Lagos, I have to leave on 5 a.m. sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they are not used to it. They're used to that, leaving on 5 a.m., coming back 6 p.m. So it's a bit strange for even their system. So I, mm -hmm. I, it was mm -hmm. easy for me because I'm an entrepreneur. Even my first job, I was a flight attendant, which okay. wasn't every day and which was, the time wasn't regular. Then now swapping, mm. switching from help flight attendant to being a caterer. It was, um, I'm always available. So it's easy for me, there's no difference. Oh, okay. You know, I cook, so while even I'm, while I'm even cooking, I'm always telling, they always used to assist me. My children have always joined me, wanted to see, oh, mommy, did you put, what do you add, ginger, or garlic, this, is that. So I think it was easy for me because I've always been available. If I was a banker, it wouldn't have been easy. If I was, Somebody who had a nine to five, it wouldn't have been easy. Let's be honest. You know, it's not easy for them mentally. It's not easy for them. They want, what am I going to do at home? So I understand where they are coming from, but they must try their best to be available to their children, psychologically, emotionally, and mentally. Most kids that they commit suicide today is because they didn't have anybody to talk to. So no matter how busy you are, remember your priorities. You need to be available to your kids. That's why I tell all parents when they ask me, when they call me, talk to me. Oh, okay. So are there some some routine activities that do uh, that you have been involved in or engaged in over time and you feel it will work for other parents yes um i created a i think i created like something for a parent i called it every friday i call it the movie nights okay. the movie nights yes my my good friend when in the father was even the one that told me about it movie night is to allow um you tell your child that we have movie night on mm -hmm. friday you buy popcorn. At the end of the day, you might not use them more than 1,000 euros. You buy popcorn, you buy soft drink for them, you buy everything for them. When they look forward to them, when kids have something they're looking forward to, it helps them do what they want to do. So you scare them. They won't be moving nights if they don't do their own work. You see them rushing to do their own work. They, they know there's popcorn on moving nights. They know there's chicken wings on moving nights. They know there's soft drink on moving nights. So they look forward to it. Now that moving night allows you to bond with them. Whether you're a banker, you're a lawyer, whatever you are, you'll be back home by 8 p.m. Let's even say you're back home by 9 p.m. on Friday. You'll be back home whatever the time is. Put the mattress, it's, it's not a big deal, in the living room. Put it on and have your TV in front of you. Bring your duvet down, cover your children, use that time to talk to them, ask them what happened in school. Buy a CD or we have Netflix, we have everything. Watch a movie together with them, a family movie. There are so many amazing family movies out there today. There's, um, there's a lovely movie I, lo I love uh, on bullying. Um, I think it's called Tao, something like that. I've forgotten the name. August. His boy's name was August. It was um, Julia Roberts and Owen Wilson. I, I if I remember the name, I'll still mention the name. But there are so many fam right. good family movies out there, comedies, you know. So watch these things with them. Play go good old songs from them that have depth. Record, take your time to go and record. Love necessarily. But even love songs are good for kids. Let them fall in love with the act of love, not sex. The songs today only promote sex. They don't promote love. So I, I tried to record old songs that I knew in the 80s. You know, give me your unconditional love. You know, um, Phil Collins, Paradise. She walks out of the man on the street. Sir, can you help me? You know, songs with great depth. Download them. Play them for your kids. Instead of this, uh, I'll shift your womb and the kind of things that are being promoted today. So have these songs for them watch a movie with them but create that thing that even if it's once a month or twice a month those days if you have a meeting call up that meeting if you let's say in case you're a busy mom a mom who works for, you know a banker or a lawyer create every two sundays or every two saturday or every two friday of a month which means in a whole year just 24 days create four hours with your kids in a whole year 24 days is not too much we have to earn six five days so parents are more available, I tell them to do 48 days. So that means four Saturdays or four Fridays, four Sunday. you choose the day and give your children that timetable. Those days, 7 to 11, 7 to 12, sit with them, watch a movie with them, talk to them, play with them, ask them questions. Are they being bullied? 
Do they feel bad about anything? Do they have a crush on someone? Ask them questions. This will make you connect to your kids. You'll find out your child is being molested or bullied or have low self-esteem. You know everything. I'm sorry about the long answers. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's, okay, it's fine. Now you just mentioned crush. Who, how do you ha handle it? Like your friend, your child rather, in the course of having the mother-daughter time, you're gisting and then you hit the nail like, are you crushing on someone? And she goes, yes, I'm crushing on someone. How do you handle that? It's very easy. You ask her immediately, does the person have a crush on you? Does the person have a crush on you? Simple. If they say they are not sure, they say find out if the person has a crush on you. Observe the way the person talks to you. Does the person respect you? Does the person play with you? Do they try to give you things? Let's say your child is maybe nine years old or 10 years old, for example. You find out, does the person talk to you? If they don't like you back, it's not worth it. If they don't have a crush on you, you have to crush your crush before your crush crushes you. That's why I tell mm -hmm. them. Crush your crush before your crush crushes you. It's fine for kids to have crush. They are human beings. But let them be aware early that if the person doesn't like them back, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. That's the problem we have in future with bad marriages today. The girls are assuming when I like a boy, I'll make him like me. No, he doesn't like you. Just leave him alone. If somebody doesn't like you, let them be. Have what they cost. That's why that's where self-worth comes in from my book. When you have this, when you have self-worth and you care and love yourself, you won't allow people to treat you anyhow. Yeah. No guy buys a Ferrari and, and breaks the his windscreen. Because he values his Ferrari, he knows how much he bought it. Nobody buys a Lamborghini and breaks it. Nobody buys a Rolls Royce and just decides to destroy it. Because it's expensive and it, 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 has, it has value. Mm. So the same thing for you as a human being. If they value you, they, they'll see you as precious. So if you value yourself, value yourself first. That's where it comes from. So having a question on someone, just remind them, if he doesn't like you back, it is not worth it. That child will start withdrawing immediately. That's how they handle crushes. Mm. <laughs> okay. So value yourself more. You see, yeah. uh, you have made a very silent point here. Value yourself more. How yeah. would you uh, address a child who sees, uh, the, let, let's take a, a girl child, for instance, a girl, a girl child feels, oh, it's all about the guys. I, I should just prepare myself and do this uh, just to please the guy. You know, that's yeah, exactly. what most people uh, are interested in. How will you promote valuing yourself or bring it to the fore for this child, this girl child to value themselves more than others? Wow, it's, it's, it's basically almost a topic for two days to value yourself first. Wow. Some, people have, some people have serious low self-esteem because of the way they've been raised. A mm. child who, I remember a, a child was asking me, I was interviewing the church, was asking me, Auntie, how come every church I go to, the pastors are always men? How come there's no female governor in Nigeria? How come there's no female president that she, I now asked, so the truth is around the girl child, she already assumes she's a second class citizen mentally. And her sister or her auntie who lives in the house that is 27 years old, they are telling her, won't you marry? Won't you marry? So the first thing the girl child assumes immediately when she meets a guy is, he's doing me a favor. I'll make it work. So they put so much pressure on themselves to try to make what is not going to work, work. They go as far as praying, you must like me. The person doesn't like you. So we have to remind them that, look at, your, look at the mirror. What do you see? A beautiful girl, an intelligent girl, a smart girl. You, you have to create that love for, you have to let them love something about them. Sit them down and tell them what is unique about you. What do you think is unique about you? So every negative thing they've seen, you turn it to positive. Mm -hmm. I was told my forehead is big. So for a long time, I didn't like, yes, <laughs> I'm sorry oh, to say. Oh. So for a long time, I, I, I can never do this kind of hairstyle. I will always cover my forehead. Oh, wow. That means if I was abroad, what would I have done? I would have done surgery. That's real. And I still had that left. I would have, that is what happens to most people. They will tell them, oh, your bum bum is flat. Oh, your chest is flat. Oh, this is flat. When they have money, what do they do? They do surgery immediately. And the surgery goes wrong. What happens to them? The tummy is too big. They want to go and do flat tummy. Do you know how many people have died from that? That I've seen online. People have died from this surgery. So you have to start reminding that child that you are beautiful. Whether you have four big forehead like myself, or you have a big nose, or you have big eyeballs, yeah, God made you special. You are beautiful the way you are. And starts rebuilding their confidence. It takes, God, they didn't have that low self-esteem in one day. So it won't take them to have good self-esteem in one day either. It's a lot of work. Wow. People, if you just joined us, this is Elumba TV and you've got uh, Lydia Odada right here with 
our awesome guests doing justice to this topic, promoting family values. Yes, we're actually looking at the effects, the positive effects of the lockdown on families. Whereas we're somehow going down to families, not just the lockdown this time, you, you can see that we're looking this way and going that way just because we care about the family. It all starts from the family. If you miss it in the family, you're already making the mistake of another family which will eventually become a generation and things are going wrong. So we're looking at promoting family values and yes. cementing it from the very root. If we get it right from the root, we'll have a very awesome crop. So people, if you are joining us and you're like, oh, I don't know what's up. Well, this is what's up. You join us on Instagram, you follow us on Facebook, and also subscribe to our YouTube channel, that is Alumba TV, and you get more of this and more. Yes, because it's not just all about family. A lot of things have been discussed on this TV platform. And it's a good thing that it's an online TV, so you can be anywhere you can join us all right so let's go back now talking about online you see uh people have been watching things online studying online let's start from the online studies now children go online for their classes and sometimes the parents may not be available to guide them or assist and then they veer off to something else now i read recently that some children had gotten into some social vices moral vices because they were having classes online and a parent had to see some things that they did not buy for the child in the child's bag they saw some items that they don't encourage in the family you know okay for instance the child doesn't have a phone but they saw a phone a brand new phone in the child's school bag they saw some other items like a gun or so. I, I can't remember all of the items found in the, in the guy's bag, the teenage boy, a secondary school boy. And all of this were found in the bag. And the child has been trying to hide it from the parents. But from the father's own uh, side of the story, he said he was just led to talk with the boy. You no, know, you know, and they had a chat and the child was sort of withdrawn. So he kept pressing and pressing until he was just moved, like seized the school bag. And the moment he sees the school bag, the boy, the boy sprang forth because you are heading for something I've been hiding from you for so long. Who even told you to go there? And on opening the bag, they saw some of all those things that they and He got talking. It was online from the online classes and all of that. So how, as a parent, how will the parent be able to manage this so that the child is online learning? He's only learning good things and not varying off to some negative things that the parent originally would not want the child to get like um like i always say you know the way these things can be whether pastor's child that reads the bible or as a child psychologist myself mm -hmm. or um parental guidance whatever training you're doing i think at the end of the day we still need god <laughs> In training our children honestly yeah. we need them they have to have the fear i've seen pastor children go wild become thieves mm -hmm. i've seen child psychology children kill themselves mm -hmm. abroad yes and so you can't get it perfectly you know we're just trying our best so you must try your best um i think at the end of the day you you have to still be physically and emotionally available to your child let them have the fear of god in them because that this part of the gun is a bit, I think I saw it, I think I read it online, it's a bit scary. First yeah. of all, as it's on social media, it becomes distracted. If um, the, uh, what's it called, the internet is available for him to Google anything, to check anything. Um, we, I, I love without the father, at the end of the day, I think it's still instinct. The father had an instinct like there's something in his back. He wasn't, he didn't ignore it. Nothing was more important to him. Some parents pick up their children. How are you? Okay, let's get inside. They didn't even know whether the boy is dull or not. And they drop him and go. The boy could kill himself. But the father was observant. And that was the reason why I said, let me have your bag. Let me check what's in your bag. And he was able to sit the gun. We need to have that instinct. Father, son instinct. He knew he raised a better son. And that boy too, if it was a bad boy naturally, he would have had those things in the bag, enter the car and still be just with the father casually. He was uncomfortable carrying that bag, that thing too. So I, what am I saying at the end of the day? Instinct observation in being emotionally available those are the major things be emotionally available to your child not just physically the father was emotionally available that's what helped him wow. so we should be emotionally available to our children that's my answer 
and pray a lot. I pray a lot. <laughs> be emotionally available. Yes, so the prayer is needed because a lot of things are happening and uh, if you're not prayerful, you may not be able to, even though you apply all the book you've read, you might yes. miss it somehow. Wow. Really, really. So are there signs that a parent should look out for? Like, generally, these are things that when a child is going wrong, you should just watch out for these things or watch your child. Once you observe this kind of move or that kind of move, know that something is going wrong. For a, for, you observe a change of behavior in the child immediately. A child that is quiet naturally becomes wild all of a sudden. There's something wrong. A child that is very, very playful, just a lot, is just withdrawn. She might be sexually abused. I spoke to a girl who just, who I'm very close to, I just spoke to her this morning. Wow. She was abused from age 9 to 15 by her uncle. Wow. But she couldn't talk. You know why? Her parents were going through a divorce at that time. Hmm. So she was feeling bad. I don't let my mother feel bad. I don't want to tell my mother. I don't want to tell my dad. So she kept quiet. It happened in, I think, mid And it's still affecting her to today. She was abused from age 9 to age 15 and she could not tell her mom because she was feeling bad as, oh, my mom is going through emotional problem. So no matter what the problem you as a parent is going through, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a loss of job, whether it's you're being broke, still be available to your child. Remember you are the parents. Your, parents should, your child should not be the one only looking out for you. You should look out for your child as well. So it still goes back to what? Emotional availability. It still goes back to what? Psychological availability really we really cannot uh overlook this availability and emotional mm -hmm. connection between parents and their children really okay you can't well, you can't you can't that that is the major okay. answer yeah really there's no way to avoid it you just have to be available like listen yeah. okay so i've heard uh, of children who would want to interact with their parents now this time around it's not the parents going to look out for the child is the child trying to say something maybe yeah. something has happened and you just go shut up i'm tired i need to work like i've been working all day i need to rest and all of that what can you tell these parents well the parent like i said we are human beings we can't be perfect. Even me, as a child psychologist, I read, don't scream. I scream at times. I'm a human being. I'm not a robot. So all this one that we will say, don't scream at each other is a lie. <laughs> you can scream at times because you're about to run mad. <laughs> you understand? You tell them to please smoke that place or sweep that place. Ah, why didn't you smoke that place? We shout at times. They're not perfect human beings. Those parents, if they do it regularly, they should watch it. Okay. Once in a while, they will do it. It's a natural thing. They will do it as a natural thing. You will shout at times, you will complain at times because really, maybe your boss, maybe you're preparing for your promotion at work, for example, and you work in all this oil and gas, and you already know from 700,000 your salary goes 1.2 million. 1. So, 1. <laughs> so, and your child now needs your attention. It's natural for you to say, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll just tell them to tone it down and look for a way to con con communicate better. Sweetie, I'll get back to you. Just give me a few seconds, please. I beg you. I promise I'll, I'll be available. But if they notice that child is going through something, no matter what it is, the child might not be more than seven minutes from you. Mm -hmm. She might not be more than seven. We have 24 hours a day. So what are we talking about? You can't spend seven minutes for your child. Just leave that work for just seven minutes and quickly give that child a little attention. The attention might save a lot. The attention might save a suicide. The attention might save depression. The attention will save a lot of things. So please, no matter how busy you are with your work, be tiny little available that's why i said if you no matter that's why i'm saying those kind of parents now they already know friday is my bonding day which is my movie night you already know it's a movie night so you know already i have 24 movie nights a year nothing was affected not even your promotion so if your movie night was four hours you can reduce it two hours if you have something to do but you must still buy that popcorn for them the chicken wings for them the soft drinks for them sit down with them lie on them just with them all the problem they had in school Monday to Friday, the people that bullied them, the work, the, uh, um, the, the subject that is tough on them, maybe it's integrated time, maybe it's civil education, maybe it's maths, they will gist you, they will tell you. So it's a connecting time. It's not about the movie now. It's not about the food. It's about you connecting mm -hmm. with them. But you've provided the movie, the food now to bribe them. They are looking forward to the popcorn. They are looking forward to the pizza. They are looking forward to the chicken wings. Mm -hmm. But to you, you know what you want to gain from them. So I always tell my parents who are very busy, make it 24 days a year. 
instead of 48 days a year. But people are not too busy, like myself, we do 48 days minimum a year for children. Wow. That's, that's awesome. And can, can I come and be your child so that I would have the movie night too? <laughs> okay. So, so let's, let's look at uh, some children that have already strayed. You, you agree with me that most teenagers we are in today's society, they strayed already because they don't have that bonding with the family, with their parents. They, they do not relate to their parents. So they would rather confide in friends than talk yeah, to their I parents. Know. I know. And you notice that these children are already big girls on, on their own. They're already yeah. big boys. They're already doing stall. And know. you are the, at that point now, the parents are seeing the negativity. They are seeing yeah. all the bad things going on, but they don't know how to manage it. They don't know how to call back these children. How, what's your advice on how, how to bring back these children and reprogram them, like you say? Yeah. You know, you, you know, at the end of the day, it's so funny that it's still the same answer. Emotional availability, psychological availability, mental availability. Yeah. You know, a child that is already going now, you notice they are drawing away from the child. You're not that close to the child. A child that you're, you're not used to at all, you're not saying that to body now again. She becomes a pure stranger. Total stranger. You know, but if you're available to you, you're close. You can easily say, I have, I have nothing against body now. But if a parent is not that available, being in body now might not be a good idea. Mm-hmm. Or you want them to be in body now, let them be able to from SS1, not JSS. Use that time to bond with them. But if they've strayed already, it's now your duty to create a real program with them, either a picnic, they go out together. There's, there's no problem that can be, if, if a problem identified is already solved, that's why I believe in life. You've already seen this is the problem. You already know your child is poor in maths. What do you do? You buy seven textbooks of maths in different ways. Download apps that teach maths in fun ways. You've seen the problem. You've seen the problem of this child. Observe what, what does she like. Bribe her to bring her close to you. But unfortunately, I'm a Yoruba girl and I know our tradition. They believe it's beaten. <laughs> I'll beat her. I'll beat her. I'll beat her very well. Like, man, no. it away from her. <laughs> oh, they'll take her to church. That. No, 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 no. It's about being emotionally available. It's about making yourself physically available to tell that child, let's go and watch a movie together. Check. God, they've done it for us already. Don't watch the movie at home. Take that kind of child out to go and watch a movie with her in the, in the proper cinema. Okay. Have a proper bonding time with that child. Laugh and just as if you're a friend. Let her be comfortable with you. Let her hold your hand, hold her hand. Work together. Stop doing I'm the boss. You're not the boss, you're the parents. And being a parent makes you a friend. Stop mm-hmm. acting as if you are in a boss, master and slave relationship. No. Make your child your friend. So a child that is straight, that is already having a boyfriend, that is already... She, because why did she have a boyfriend that early? Because she's looking for love outside. She wants mm-hmm. attention. And the boy gives her the attention. She texts the boy. The boy texts her back. She calls the boy. Boy to pop home. If your child has a phone, text your child. Just want to check, just checking on you. Hope you know I love you. Say I love you to them. Hug them tight. If they are still young, peck them on the cheek. If you, if you have, as okay, my, my husband doesn't kiss my children on the mouth anymore. But when they were babies, he kissed them on the mouth because it's a man. So he pecks them on the cheek and kisses them on the forehead a lot. It gives them a comfort. Yeah, it, it gives them, it makes them look forward to what a, a proper love should be. Like my kids now, it will be hard for them to start dating and see a guy who washes plates. Who doesn't wash plates? My husband washes plates. But for me, when I got married, it was strange my husband was washing plates. My father didn't wash plates when I was growing up. Mm. But his mother raised him to be domesticated because she had three boys. But wow. my dad, on the other hand, I did see him washing plates. That's the truth. Though my brothers washed plates growing up. They were, they were very domesticated. But my dad did not. So when I saw my husband doing this, I was happy. So my kids now, if they start dating, what will happen? It will be strange to them to see a guy who assumes, if I remove my shoe, you carry it for me. I've seen families who do that. <laughs> they enter the living room, they remove their shoe. Their, yeah, their wife carries their shoe to the room. They are, that is the method we were used to growing up. But all that is changing now. So all this at the end of the day is still emotional availability. Your child is moving away from you. Bring her back. You have the power to do that. You're brought out of the world. You are the parents. Ask her what she wants. Surprise her with a gift. Buy a new top. Buy a new jeans. If you, can't, if you don't have the money, then be, be physically available just with a top to her. You don't do anything wrong. 
Just it's a regular easy thing. It's not that hard. You bring her back to you. You, you know, you've been practicing it, so it's it's really easy for you. But some parents it's will be easy. like, what? <laughs> I should come and gist with my child? Like, you 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 no, they take orders from me. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. That, that's how we all grew up, too. My, I don't remember. I think I'm the only one that was, that was able to gist with my dad. And I'm the last of eight. Mm. All my other ones were not able to sit down and gist with them like that. Growing up. But because I was the, the last, it was easy for him to have relaxed. He was tired of shouting on the first, yes. second, fourth, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. He was tired of the shouting. And my mom was tired of the shouting. So you are retired then? You are retired then. So now he relaxed with me. He wasn't happy. A guy is coming to look for me, they didn't even care. But a guy looking for my other sister then, they either lock her hair or shout on the boy or they beat the <laughs> I remember very well. So, I can so imagine. <laughs> Wow. That was good, you know. Thank God. <laughs> Honestly, you've, you've really, you've really uh, done justice to uh, this course for today. But just before we call it a wrap on this session, tell us and our viewers who would, join, who would stumble on this how to manage bullying because bullying is a major problem in the society. Children face bullying in school. They face it at home, in different places. So how can this be managed? At first, before I became a child psychologist, I used to believe you have to fight back, which I still recommend once in a while. You need to learn how to fight back immediately. But what I feel right now, I always tell my kids that they should feel bad for bullies. Bullies are people with inferiority complex who are shadowing it with pride. Mm -hmm. Bullies, if you are truly a kind person and doesn't have a problem, you won't be looking for a way to tear people down. Mm -hmm. I love a page I follow on Instagram. His name is it's called um, Gary V. Yeah. Gary V. Chuck or something like that. Gary Vag I think he said, if somebody's trying to tear you down, guess what? They are broken. So when bully people bully you, just tell them, oh, yeah, I feel really bad for you. That's all. You, can, you win that way. You don't need to fight that much anymore. And don't let it get to you. I did a, um, a, 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 my last training for children. I showed them what it means to bully someone. I gave one child a pencil that gave it to me. So when she was trying to give it to me, I just turned my back on her. She said, I said, that's like somebody telling you, you're an idiot, you're a fool, somebody who disturbs you. What did I do to you? I didn't take it. She said, oh, auntie, so I won't take it. I said, yes, you won't take it. If somebody calls you an idiot, are you an idiot? No. If somebody tells you you're ugly, do you, are you ugly? She said, no. So it's for you to not mentally accept it and give them back. And when you ignore them, they feel bad. And because like, the, end of the, the person with the complex is actually the bully. Yeah. It's an inferiority complex rather like superiority complex. It's because they feel inferior. They are sad about something. And they are broken. So they are looking for to tear down. So at the end of the day, I still I tell people now to handle a bully. Feel bad for them. I'll pray for them. Just tell them, I'll pray for you. You need help. <laughs> It makes them angry because they want to get to you, but and they can see they're not winning, so it makes them sad. Yeah, that's all. Like that. But if you now say it's too much, you can fight back. Hmm. But that is my new way of handling bullies now. Feel bad for them; they need help. <laughs> now this is really going to be hard because you know in this part of the world we're used to fighting. Where you, you as a child you go to school, somebody beats you, you get back home, your mom will beat you and tell you. What were your hands doing? Yeah. Can't you go back and beat them? Beat them. Yes. Yes. My mom personally did that to me. Okay. Somebody is beating you. Uh, really? My mother did Go back and beat them. And you just see yourself fighting for nothing. You just go and start a fight just to pay back, like, <laughs> to measure up. Okay? So, um, it's really a good one. And trust me, I'll say you've done well for coming around and all this exposition. But just before we step out, are you available? Like, if we want to reach you for them or maybe there's a child we want you to talk to uh, there's a family that wants you your counseling what is available for that i'm always available for you hey. that you know by now how do we reach you for those who be seeing this for the very first time how do we reach you how do we connect with you <laughs> okay you can follow my instagram page which is shadi Oshibo, which is mainly for my and helping children okay. is my child psychology page even the post on my page alone helps some parents without even calling me mm. <laughs> the regular post i make on my page is shadi Oshibo. 
But my catering page, I'm usually on that one, which is D24 Oven. They can private chat me, they can send me a DM, or they can call me or send me a WhatsApp on 080-7891-2630. Is this correct? 080-7891-2630. Yes. 0802 no, 6 Okay. 0802-7891-2630. 0802-7891-2630. All right. Yes. Okay, so that will be it. So people, if you're seeing this for the very first time and you don't know who this is, this is Shade Osibo, Fola Shade Osibo. She's a child psychologist. She's an author. Can you tell us about your book? Can we reach, can we get your book? How do we get the book? Because a lot of Yeah, you can. You, by, if, if they send me a, um, a, a WhatsApp message or a DM, we'll deliver to them nationwide. Even we have in, we have in America, we have in US, it just finished in UK. So I have to send more copies to UK next week. Okay. It's sold out in UK. Yes, I sent just 50 copies, so, but so I, have, I still have in US. What book is this? The books are, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. There's one for a girl and there's yes. another one for the boy, for the boy. boy. Yes. Okay. And yes. I understand you're, you're writing and you have more books coming. What are we expecting? Which other one? Yeah, yeah, expecting how to get celebrated and not tolerated. Mm. Another interesting one. Because we need to, you need to be celebrated. You should not be tolerated. Nobody should be tolerated. You need to be celebrated. Mm. And also fart everywhere you go. F-A-R-T. Get be fabulous, attentive, reliable, and tenacious everywhere you go. Wow. And so many more. Hmm. And so many more. I'm focused on children. We're building children. By, by, we, have, we have to build our kids to be mentally strong. Very we have to build, build, build them. If we build our children to be mentally strong, I assure you, we won't have much suicide. It will reduce. If we build our kids, there won't be much depression. There won't be low self-esteem. Um, there will be more friendly, more loving people. Even this, I think I was, I was watching from an investigation a few days ago, and a girl slept in her boy, ex-boyfriend's office overnight. Wow. And came out and shot him. Uh -uh. Shot him on the hand. It was from an investigation. Why? The boy broke up with her. The guy never planned to date her. It was meant to just use her and dump her, but she now fell in love strongly. Now, if she had something we call the self-worth, and she knew, she, she knew her worth, but when the guy was asking out, you can't print, you can't, you can't hide a feeling. Mm -hmm. Somebody who doesn't like you, doesn't like you, somebody who likes you, likes you, you can't pretend to like someone. She is the one that assumed the guy liked her in the first place. The guy didn't like her. And I just shared one again, I saw this morning on Facebook as well. The girl went to burn the guy's car. Unfortunately for her, somebody recorded it. She's going to be in prison for 10 years for a guy that did not like her. Wow. For a guy that did not like her. She went to burn his car. So many things like that. How about the recent story of the man who killed the innocent, the, the Ghanaian pastor who killed? His anger. If he was able to manage his anger, no matter what that girl did, even if she dated his father, he had no right to take her life. It's unfair. Yeah, that's he has now killed somebody's sister, somebody's daughter, somebody's best friend. He just killed her. Why? Because they had a problem in their marriage. Now he's going to end up in prison or he's going to be killed because it was first degree murder. Anger management is in my book as well. Why do people become mad as a sin? Do you understand? So all these things is still mental. We need to manage our men, mental, mental health. All right, people. So if you're thinking what's going on, this is Fola Shade Osiba's page on Instagram. You can follow her. You can see oh, the book you. here. You can see the book. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You can see other posts Thank you so of much. she and her children. I can see her somewhere up there. Okay, that's it. I was cooking. Okay. <laughs> I was cooking. The show. <laughs> you can see cooking and a lot of other things are happening on this page. You can reach her, get to talk with her. You need attention. You feel your family truly, truly does need uh, some counseling. You can see. You can see how with some kids, these are not just her children. There are other children there with her. So you can reach her, follow her on Instagram, on Facebook for tips. She drops, she's a good, like I had to ask her one day, I said, come, is somebody are managing your page or you're doing all of these things by yourself? Because she drops this every now and then. She does this. So, so follow her. Call her up anytime. Anytime you want, she will be there for you. She's a lovely person. I'm always 
Thank Zeri, you. Zeri is going. Thank you so much. She's not a bully. I'm honored. She's fighting. If you're a bully, she's fighting. <laughs> I've seen her fight. Fight bully all the time. <laughs> so follow Sh- follow Shadi Osibo on Instagram, Facebook. She's also uh, created a YouTube channel for her kids who are becoming entrepreneurs themselves. Kiki and Momo. Follow them on YouTube as well. Okay, people. This is where we call it a wrap. But before we go, please give your viewers an advice so that they will know what to look out for and how to go about things, please. Okay, first of all, you need to order my book right away. It's mm-hmm. called I Am Fearfully and Wonderfully Made, mm-hmm. which is 19 ways to raise mentally strong children. Mm-hmm. We need to raise mentally strong children. With the amount of stress out there online, they see bullies everywhere. Some people will just tell them, go and die, kill yourself, all sorts of things we see. So for you to raise mentally strong children, first of all, the secret is to be emotionally available. And... I have my audio book and I also have my uh, phys- uh, paperback book okay. physically available. You can, you can try, you can send it to anywhere in the world. Oh, Thank okay. you very much. All right. Thank you so much for coming around, people. This is what we call it a wrap. This is what we draw the curtains for today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. For those who will be seeing this uh, later on on Instagram, on Facebook, and on our YouTube channel, do subscribe so that when next we're here, you get a notification that we are on. This is Elumba TV, giving voice to the voiceless. And today we did look at the family, promoting a wonderful family because it all starts from the family. Until we come your way again, yes, do stay safe. And from me to you, thank you so much for being here. Have yourself a splendid day, man. Thank you for having me. You're thank welcome. you for having me. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Bye now.